Let's summarize the 2022 Formula 1 season and analyze how the technical development of the cars progressed during the year. The year started with a massive rule change to ground effect cars. That means that F1 cars can now have a fully curved floor instead of a flat plate like in the past. So it was clear that teams would concentrate on generating as much downforce as possible from the floor, because the floor is around two to three times more efficient than wings. More efficient means, for example, you generate more downforce for the same drag. In order to improve racing and to make it easier for cars to follow each other, the FIA did an in-depth analysis on the topic for a couple of years and identified outwash as the main issue. Formula 1 cars of the past generated extreme outwash to push the dirty air of the uncovered front wheels, the so-called front wheel wake, outboard. Because if this low energy air hits the downforce producing parts at the back, like rear wing and barrel area, the car loses a lot of downforce. If a car produces lots of outwash, the low energy air travels along the side of the car and clean air hits the wing at the back. This clean air is then pushed up and the low energy air is closing in behind the car, leaving the following car in low energy, so it produces much less downforce and cannot follow. So pre-2022 F1 cars produce outwash with the front wing, front brake cooling, blown front axle and behind the wheel with the bargeboard area. In the 2022 rule book, all of these things were banned. Front wings are not allowed to have outwashing vertical elements since 2019 and today they need to be straighter and simpler to avoid outwash. Front brake cooling is allowed, but the outlet of this air now has to be on the inner side of the wheel, instead of blowing outside. Blown front axles are banned. And the bargeboard area is simply gone. The idea is that by avoiding outwash, the front wheel wake now sits a lot closer to the car's centerline. The dirty air gets pushed up at the back and clean air from the sides closes in behind the car, so that the following car gets cleaner air, produces more downforce and can follow more easily. And that's exactly what the teams don't want. So for the teams, it was clear that recovering outwash is one of the high priorities for this year, like I described in my first video before the season started. A good recovery for the bargeboard area was the possible large outer strake of the floor inlet. With this massive blade, the lower front wheel wake could be pushed outside. But it was important to push the upper part of the wake outside as well. And so teams pushed the side pod inlet as far forward as possible and then even used a straight wall on the regulation box limit to create outwash. Mercedes even went a few steps further and also used the rear mirror stay to increase this outwash. As I described at the beginning of the year, it would be a good idea for some teams to use large side pods to push the wake outside and then also keep it there. At the same time, teams could use the well-known downwash strategy of recent years to pull clean air from above down to produce downforce at the back. So by filling the empty space in the center with clean air, the cars can generate more performance and keep the low energy wake outside. Most of the teams followed that approach. Red Bull, Ferrari, Alpine and Alpha Tauri. Then there were two teams trying a different approach with using large side pods but getting clean air through a huge undercut to the back. Aston Martin and Alfa Romeo. Then there were two teams trying to get as much energy to the back as possible through tiny side pods. A philosophy that worked well before the 2022 rules were introduced. Mercedes and Williams. And then there were two teams that were somehow undefined. They didn't have large side pods, but they also didn't have tiny ones. They didn't really have strong downwash, but also not huge undercuts. McLaren and Haas. McLaren even took air from the floor entry and guided it up and around the side pod. In other words, taking air from the downforce producing floor. And then came the first test and the new cars started to bounce up and down the streets. Some at a higher frequency, some at lower frequency. No one saw this coming in CFD or wind tunnel and it became the main issue to fix for the teams. The only team that had little to no problem with bouncing was Red Bull. Their technical director, 
Adrian Newey already wrote his final thesis about ground effect on race cars in 1979 and worked on ground effect cars afterwards. So during the first period of ground effect cars, before they were banned and straight floors introduced. As he confirmed at the end of the 2022 season, he remembered the bouncing problems of the 1970s caused by suction peaks. Red Bull developed a floor without vertical kick points but with more horizontal expansion. If you want to know more about this and how it works, check out my other videos. But although Red Bull had less issues with bouncing, they had a typical Red Bull start into the season. First they developed the car until last minute and show nothing of it until they have to at the first test. And then they start less prepared into the season because they need to get to know the car first. Additionally, they brought their first big update at the second preseason test. So they needed to get experiences with that again. Other teams had to sort out bouncing first. Ferrari had bouncing but at low frequency that didn't disturb them too much and their car was fast on every track. The risk for them was that, like all other teams, they didn't fully understand bouncing, so every new update could make the problem worse. Mercedes, on the other hand, suffered quite a lot from it and took the time to fully understand the issue. Unfortunately for them, that took half the season. Meanwhile, teams tried to eliminate suction peaks by redesigning floors without kick points. Another effect was that floor edges were bending down at higher speeds when the suction underneath the car increased, sealing the floor even better and making things worse. To avoid that, teams were stiffening their floors with support cables and brackets on top. Underneath, they introduced metal strakes that skid on the ground before the floor edge gets too close to the street. And at the floor edge, they introduced slots which still send air underneath the car even if the floor is very close to the ground. Cables and brackets to stiffen up floors can be covered nicely with large side pods. With small side pods, these devices are exposed to the airflow. If you want to avoid that, you have to reinforce the thin floor itself and that means weight. So a car with large areas of exposed floor needs to bring more weight into the car to prevent the floor edges from bending down. So weight, which was already an issue at the beginning of the season, became even more of a problem and teams even started to remove paint from their cars to save weight, which caused cars to turn black during the course of the season because these are carbon fiber parts. Although cars look heavier with large side pods, they have better weight saving potential than cars with small side pods. So all teams changed to large downwashing side pods, the same concept that the car which was winning the championship had from the very beginning. All teams that changed during the season had a massive redesign job to do, which ate their development budget and when the update was ready, they needed to understand their car again, which takes additional time. All teams adapted large downwashing side pods, except Mercedes. They stick to their tiny pod design and were working on understanding bouncing and stiffening up their floor. If Mercedes can keep their front rear wake outboard enough and stiffen up their floor so it's as stable as one of the large side pod cars, they certainly have an unobstructed way for high energy air to reach the back and produce lots of downforce. This is what they see in their simulations and that's the reason why they try to make it work in 2022. When the bouncing issues were mostly solved, teams concentrated on improving performance of their cars. Main areas were here floor edge design, sidewall bodywork with downwash that created a bobsleigh shape that Ferrari was using from the beginning. The teams tried to keep the front rear wake outside for as long as possible and at the same time drag clean air in the middle down towards the back. During rainy sessions we could see how the front rear wake of the cars is hitting the rear wheels. In previous years it was flowing along the outside of the rear wheels. And if the wake is hitting the rear wheel a little bit on the inboard side of the rear wheel stagnation point, it will flow along the inner side and cause downforce. So teams try to push it as far out for as long as possible. The next thing was that teams worked on a slimmed center floor section like Red Bull, with steps and increased side expansion. But floor development is always complex because it's a huge part costs lots of money and with these ground effect cars can have dramatic consequences if you get it wrong. 
so teams are very careful with floor development and better take smaller steps. Another point of the rule change 2022 was the redesign of the rear wing end plates in order to reduce the rear wing's efficiency, as now the higher pressure from above can flow to the suction side more easily and hence creates larger tip vortices. Teams want to avoid that and a very innovative solution was introduced by Aston Martin for high downforce tracks, the armchair design. So, they took the minimum radius which the regulations intended to bend down but swept it up and hence created a sidewall like an end plate. Mercedes on the other hand used a bluff leading edge at the sides of their wing to create a high pressure zone which kind of keeps the flow on top of the wing and recovers a bit of the lost end plate part. And as we suggested at the beginning of the season, teams started to experiment with rake angle again to increase downforce. Now let's have a look at how each team performed. In this graphic we can see the points that each team scored per race. And in this diagram you can see how many points they collected through the course of the season. As mentioned before, we see a typical Red Bull curve, which starts low and then outperforms other teams. Red Bull has been the most constant team here and has the steepest curve. Ferrari started strong, but the overall curve is flatter than Red Bull's. With all the problems they had, it's impressive to see that Mercedes could stay parallel to Ferrari and even got closer towards the end of the season. We can see a very nice battle for fourth position between Alpine and McLaren. Like Red Bull, Alpine started with large downwashing side pods and could improve the concept step by step. So the advantage for them was that they didn't have to change concept during the season. McLaren on the other hand had a fast car at the beginning of the season but then had to sort out their issues first and quickly brought large updates and could catch up. For the midfield teams we can clearly see how they performed well in the first half of the season but then their line went flat and they didn't score much until the end of the season. Reason could be that they started development on next year's car already. Also we shouldn't forget that although there is a budget cap in place top teams still have an advantage of using their tools more efficiently, so they can develop more with the same money. So it's also possible that these teams were hitting their development budget here. The exception is Aston Martin. Their curve is getting steeper towards the end of the season and they seem to understand their car better and better. Also a tradition at this team. So what can we expect for 2023? The cars still look very simple compared to recent years and we can expect them to get more complicated, especially the floors will get more complex. The large downwashing side pods prove to be the best basis, so I expect all 9 teams that use them right now to carry on with them. Mercedes on the other hand is a very innovative team and might still try to make their zero pod design work. It seems like they don't have a problem to keep the wake outside, but they do have a problem with reinforcing their large exposed floor area, which also increases the weight of the car. So maybe we will still see small side pods at the Mercedes next year, but a few tricks to stabilize the floor. It's possible teams will work more with rake angle, which will also bring the front wing closer to the ground and produce more front downforce, which in return enables teams to increase downforce at the back to keep the same balance. How did you like the 2022 F1 season? Let me know in the comments below and see you at the next video.